Hi everybody, I'm Josh Constantine with TechCrunch TV, and today I'm here with Raj Dadada, the CEO of Bloomreach. They're a big data marketing company that helps websites get more traffic and convert uh, their visitors into more sales. Uh, but today, they're launching their new mobile service, and we're here, and we're going to hear what you guys are going to be doing with this. So, you guys have $41 million in funding That's now. Right. You've got 90 or so of the biggest brands in the, the country working with you guys. Why is it so important to bring your service to mobile? Well, mobile's where the consumer is going, and so all of our brands, some of the largest in the country, are realizing that when their consumers are going mobile, they got to have an answer to how to provide a really relevant experience on the mobile device, and that, in fact, their business depends on it, that the conversion characteristics, the monetization characteristics on a mobile platform are, in many cases, worse than they are on a desktop platform, and doesn't, that doesn't just jeopardize the direct mobile revenue, it jeopardizes their desktop and online business, and it ultimately jeopardizes their offline business as well if you don't deliver a great experience to the consumer. So you guys are going to help them make money by not just reskinning their website into an app or a mobile site, but really making it special for mobile and, and working with the, the data that you can cull from people and, and what you know about them. So why don't you show us what, uh, what the mobile service does? That sounds great. I mean, we call it, we call it a responsive experience. And the, the thesis behind it is that mobile's different. It's personal. It's got to be highly relevant. I can't, I can't type. I got to see something that's highly relevant. Otherwise, my attention span goes away and I'm gone. And so we built a really interesting set of services that deliver relevance on the phone and revenue to the customer. And why don't I go ahead and, and, and show you some of that. So if we take a, a website like Neiman Marcus that has a fashion conscious audience, you know, they didn't just reskin their website for the mobile platform. By leveraging a series of Bloomreach services, they uplift the relevance of the mobile experience. So let's try to use the predictive search box. If I go and I type you know, G, U here, it's going to predict that I'm looking for Gucci shoes. I'm going to tap on Gucci shoes based on all the data that Bloomreach has around browsing on the web related to the types of queries people are looking for. It's going to recommend Gucci shoes. And this is what we call predictive search. The basic idea is it's search that gets better even while I'm sleeping. It's going to look at what I click on, what I browse on, what I buy, what I have a propensity to be interested in. It's going to constantly uplift the ranking of those products and make the search engine smarter and better and drive more revenue for the customer. So you guys power all of this predictive search with we your big data. We power, we power all the predictive search with the big data. And then we make it visual. We say, hey, in a tap-based interface, it's not just about links. It's about people looking at images and visually browsing. So if I see this pair of shoes and I think it's interesting, I'm going to hit the butterfly icon here, and it's going to say items similar to that pair of shoes. And then I'm going to browse around here and say, you know, this pair might be more interesting. And I tap that, and I see a similar pair of shoes to that one. And so it becomes a much more fun, much more engaging, much more inspiring experience to go browse around rather than clicking up and down link trees. And so then what about, uh, you've got some trending stuff too. You're looking at all the data across what people are clicking through on Pinterest and Facebook, right? That's right. And you know, our view is that social is a terrific signal for what's trending and what's hot. And so we built a service called What's Hot or Social Trending. And if I click on the, the What's Hot icon, it's going to be bringing me to the currently trending products on Facebook and on Pinterest for that specific retail website. So in this case, this dress and this bag are the hottest products from Neiman Marcus right now in real time. And if I come back five minutes later, a different set of products might be trending on Facebook and Pinterest. And this can be used to inspire new products and new product introductions for folks. So you guys are also doing some cool stuff with uh, this multi-platform idea of trying to figure out who someone is when they log on a mobile or when they're not even logged in. That's right. You want to know, are they the same person as on the desktop? Because if you know that, then you know a lot about their usage behavior. You know what they're interested in already, and you can show them more relevant stuff. So how are you guys you know, doing that? How are you pulling the data and figuring out who I am on mobile and well, that you know, I'm the I mean, same person as you, I am on the web? You raise what we think is uh, the critical problem with mobile, which is that it's one of many devices. And yet today, websites treat you as if you're a second person if you go pull up another device, unless you log in. And 80 or 90 percent of people don't log in. So the technology we've built is about understanding what the user is doing on all platforms and building a unified user profile by looking at their browse behavior, by looking at the networks they're on, by looking at the products they visit, by looking at the locations they browse from. And all of that tells us, yes, you're indeed Josh, or you are an individual person. We won't know who you are specifically, but we'll know the profile of products and services that you're interested in. And then we build a, a set of recommendations here, which I'll show you here in a minute, that effectively suggest 
the type of content or the types of products that you might be interested in based on your cross-platform browsing behavior, increasing the probability again that you see something totally relevant when you pull out your phone because of what you browsed last night. So if I'm like, you know, browsing some cool Nike shoes on my desktop from the Mission District in San Francisco at 7 p.m., yep. and then, you know, tomorrow you see somebody who is in a similar place but on their mobile device, and, you know, they're also browsing Nike shoes, they're looking at the same kind of things, you know, it's at a similar time of day, uh, I'm on like a similar network, uh, you know, then you're going to be able to tell that I'm the same person, right? And then, yeah. then you can show me the, like, the things that I was interested in yesterday. That's right. You, I, can, I can say with high confidence, you are indeed interested in a Nike pair of shoes. You have a propensity to the Nike brand. You might have a propensity to the particular price range. You might be interested in a particular style of sneakers. And so when, you, when you're, and the next day you pull out your phone and visit the Nike website or any one of our client websites, you would see a set of recommendations that is informed by your browsing on a different platform yesterday. And that relevance is really important because the more, the more I see relevant you know, products, the more likely I am to end up buying. That's right. In fact, to the tune of about about 40% increases in revenue per visit for individuals who come into these mobile platforms, both directly as well as in terms of driving them to the store or driving them to buy on a desktop or an iPad. So that's a big deal. If you're going to be able to help people make 40% more, you know, on, on their mobile visits, that's that's a huge deal. We'll we'll see if that works out. But isn't you know you, you're relying on a lot of data that isn't necessarily volunteered. It's just sort of the the data that you get from my normal web browsing. Like, does that raise any privacy concerns? Like, do you think people are there's going to be any backlash to that as uh, this becomes more prevalent in mobile? We think that at the end of the day, if you're delivering relevance to the consumer, that's the number one target. And the things that we do to make sure that we protect privacy at all costs are one, the data stays within an individual retailer. So we're never taking data that you might be you know, sharing on Neiman Marcus and applying it to Nordstrom. It's all within the silo. It's not an ad that you go buy on the web. And the second thing is it's not an advertisement. So you're not out selling the data for the purpose of making money. You're, you're using the data to inform the quality of the experience that you as a retailer would use to serve your own customers, which enhances uh, the quality of that experience. And you're doing all of that off of non-personally identifiable information. So I'm never gonna know who you are specifically, what your credit card information is, what your social security number is. It's all about the browse and click and preference behavior. Do you guys have an opt-out for that kind of stuff? You can at any point decide not to click on the service and not have it be available for you. Got it. Well, I think some people might find some issues with that, but personally, like I want relevant content, I want relevant ads, I want relevant recommendations, uh, and you know, I don't want to, to be seeing you know ads for women je women's jeans or see that as a featured product on a website when I'm I'm not going to buy any women's jeans. So it sounds like a really cool service. I'm excited to see how it goes, and I think yeah. that we are, we're going to see more and more of this kind of big data application to to the mobile marketing experience. So cool on doing something really different and new. Thank you. Cheers. Excited. Thanks a lot.